What makes people fear those that are different than themselves? This is an idea and a question that people have asked forever. History, after all, is written by those in power. And oftentimes, those people in power have opinions that we do not share today. Their, our standards are not their standard. Here's, a, here's an example of proof that Teddy Roosevelt, often seen as a progressive person of his time, said this, I wouldn't go as far to think that the only good Indian is the dead Indian, but I believe every nine out of ten are, and I shouldn't like to inquire too closely onto the case of the tenth. It's important to realize that this mindset was not controversial. It was common for people of the era, and it was used to bring out the worst in humanity. It was used to discriminate, bring violence, and persecute others. Also, it's important to realize that this is not a new fear, not even close. Let's go back to the high school's explosion from Egypt in the 16th century BC. Picture it. The sun is beating down on the sand-covered streets of ancient Egypt as foreign monuments emerge in the city of Averis. The Hyskus, a nomadic people from Western Asia, had taken control of Northern Egypt. To the native Egyptians, they were foreigners seizing power that wasn't theirs. The Hyskus didn't just impose their own culture, though. They tried to incorporate aspects of Egyptian culture while introducing foreign customs, like building Eastern-style monuments in their capital city of Averis. This cultural blending was not well-received especially among the Egyptian elites. In time, people all over the country were fed up with the high school's rule as they saw their way of life slipping away. As power shifted back to Thebes, the Egyptians fought against the high school's, led by Amos I. After a series of decisive victories, Amos successfully overthrew the high school's, forcing them out of Egypt and reclaiming the land for the Egyptians. This victory was an insignificant event. It marked the rise of a new Egyptian identity, with a culture that sought to close itself off from outsiders. Egypt united against what they saw as a foreign threat, but this type of thing also happened on a smaller scale too. It happened in towns with people accusing their own neighbors, making their friends their enemies. In colonial America during the 17th century, paranoia gripped the town of Salem. One moment, it was an average Puritan town, where everyone knows everyone. Then all of a sudden, people are whispering about, whispering about witches, their own neighbors. Tensions were hot. The townsfolk blamed every misfortune, sickness, crops failing, on the work of the devil. In January 1692, when a young girl started having violent fits, it didn't take long for accusations to fly. Three women were blamed. A Caribbean slave, a homeless beggar, and an elderly woman. Each one of them already stood on the fringes of society. One of the women confessed to witchcraft, ignited a wildfire of fear and suspicion. The message was clear. Any deviation from the norm could brand you as a threat. Over the course of that year, 20 people were killed, all accused of witchcraft. Even dogs weren't spared. Two got accused and killed. The witch trials showed how fragile a community can be, how fear can drive people to turn on one another, even without real differences. The fear of others didn't go away as their nods progressed. It simply changed form. Fast forward to the 19th century. The fear of difference evolved into something seemingly rational, science. But what came from it was a dangerous lie. Pseudoscience emerged, with people using the theory of evolution to justify the superiority of certain races. They measured skulls, creating classifications that served only to reinforce the idea that white, upper-class people were inherently superior. Eugenics followed, giving supposed scientific backing to what was nothing more than prejudice. These false sciences gave people a reason, proof, to continue believing that non-white people were not just lesser, but dangerous. But the truth is, it was just another way of justifying this same old fear. Then came the 20th century, and with it, a new kind of fear, the Red Scare. This time, it wasn't based on race, it was political. After World War II, the Soviet Union became America's biggest threat. The Cold War turned into a psychological battlefield, and the enemy was communism. Joseph McCarthy claimed that communists had infiltrated the U.S. government. Soon, it wasn't just government officials under suspicion, but everyday citizens. In Hollywood, in academia, in labor unions, anyone could be accused of being a communist sympathizer, ending careers, and ruining lives. HUAC, the House Un-American Activities Committee, launched investigations into alleged communist activity. This wasn't even based on your ideas, but your actions. Progressive ideas, or just having different beliefs, could all brand you as a communist. Fear didn't just target ideologies, it targeted behavior. The Red Scare was about protecting the American way of life, just as past fears sought to protect other national identities. And just like animals adapt to a changing world, 
Fears do too. Even in the 21st century, we see the same forces at play. Take Brexit, for example. On the surface, it was about freeing the UK from the European Union's regulations. But if you dig deeper, the underlying fear becomes clear. Many saw the influx of immigrants from Eastern Europe as a threat, culturally and economically. The British pound may have fallen, but what Brexit truly signified was the old fear of the other. Different cultures, different people, same fear. As you've seen throughout history, people have always struggled to coexist with those who are different from themselves. Whether in the past or the present, these differences, whether racial, cultural, ideological, or religious, can spark fear, mistrust, and sometimes even violence. These events remind us that the fear of the other is not a thing of the past. It is a struggle we still face today. But there's hope. Just as history has shown us the dangers of fear, it has also shown us that humanity is capable of overcoming it. The real question is, will we let history repeat itself or will we rise above?